Hi everybody. How are you all today? Are you joining us for the, this is the third session in our um, Kubernetes series. Michael will be talking to us about monitoring specifically. And I just want to give a quick shout out to um, our teams for the Ideathon on Saturday. So we now have some teams in. Uh, we've got Team Iron Man, Team Captain America, Team Thor, Team Hulk, Team Mark, and Team Falcon. And if you'd like to see who our um, who the members of those teams are, then go to our website, Cloud Lunch and Learn forward slash Ideathon. And you can check out the, the teams there. Um, so I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who signed up for this Ideathon. Um, it means a lot to the Cloud Lunch and Learn team. We are super happy that you're choosing to spend your weekend with us and that you're going to use your skills to help um, Evelyn with her um, Memory Haven app for those to support those suffering from dementia. It's a really, really worthy cause. So if you've joined up, if you've signed up with us, thank you. Um, and everyone, go and check out the team names and the team members on our website. And if you know someone, um, give them a pat on the back for joining. Okay, so let's see if Michael is here. Let's see if he wants to come on and say hello. Let's bring him in. Hey. Hi, Michael. How are you? How are you? Good. I How am good, you? thank you. <laughs> yeah, good. Perfect. I'm always scared that I'm um, on mute or something's <laughs> not working, but uh, we seem to be good. We seem to be fine. We're, we're getting better at this. All good. Um, yeah. How are you? How was your weekend? Anything exciting? No, you know, I just kind of just hung out, decompressed a little bit, you know, yep. relaxed, uh, tried a yep. new whiskey, so that was good. Uh, yeah, just hung out, relaxed. <laughs> How about you? Uh, very much the same. In <laughs> fact, I am turning into full-on hibernation mode. I definitely feel like I turn into a bit of a bear at the in the winter, and I just want to sleep all the time. So I am... Um, pretty sad really but I had my nose stuck in a book from Friday after work all the way through Saturday basically I just read for ages yep. but loved it very yep. chilled out who's the who's the dog in the background oh that's Lainey over there uh I think she was barking at me last time uh on this on this call yeah she's uh she'll be well she actually just turned 19 weeks so a little over five months give or take yeah so she's oh, wow. still a little one yeah <laughs> She's so pretty. She looks very um, cozy up there. Is she a boxer? You know, it's funny. Uh, every single person that has ever seen her thinks that she's a boxer. Um, now I'm starting to be convinced that she might be a boxer. But when I got her, they told me that she's a Victorian bulldog. Um, right. Victorian bulldogs are like very different from like English and American bulldogs. Um, yeah. Whereas they're more like short and stocky. She's gonna be like tall and like lean and big, like a boxer. But, like if you Google them, like Victorian bulldogs, they pretty much look like uh, like boxers. But yeah, yeah I'm really not a hundred percent sure at this point. I, she's either a boxer or a Victorian bulldog. That that makes sense. I came across a breeder um, who I can't remember if it was. I don't think they used the term Victorian, but it was basically old school. English um, bulldogs, and they've. I instantly thought that they were boxers, but apparently they are the traditional um, yeah. breeds. So yeah, that's that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, my my little brother is actually getting a cocker spaniel oh, nice. um, yes. puppy next week. I'm so excited. Um, nice. Yeah, I can't wait. Is, this is my first dog, so her and I are both kind of learning the ropes together. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one one day I will add uh, a dog to my collection of animals. <laughs> anyway, let's leave let's leave the animal chat there and let's crack on with what the people came to see, which okay. is all about Kubernetes and monitoring. So yes. let me disappear and I'll hand over to you. Actually, if you share your screen, we'll get the QR code up. We'll yes. get people 
Should be able to see my screen now. Beautiful. Okay, everybody. Um, if you're with us right now, live, hello, um, let us know that you're watching. Give us a tweet on uh, Cloud Lunch and Learn um, or let us know in the comments. But most importantly, if you could all either scan this QR code or take the link that you see there on screen, I will get the link and put it um, across all of our channels. But if you could please um, sign up uh, and register to show that you attended the session, um, it looks good for us on the Cloud Lunch and Learn team. Um, but also, most importantly, you get free access to learning materials from Microsoft all about this topic. So um, it's where you got all the good stuff. So if you could take a moment to do that, that would be much appreciated. And with that said, I shall leave and hand over to Michael. Great, Bye -bye. thanks. Cool. So monitoring. Uh, this is it's a funny topic because when a lot of people think of like monitoring and logging, it doesn't sound like the most fun thing in the world. Uh, you know, where I, I come up from a traditional infrastructure and cloud engineering background, and I've since then moved over to the development space. So uh, I've, I've had a unique sense of monitoring in terms of like what it looks like from an infrastructure and a cloud engineering space to what it looks like from a development space. So luckily I was kind of able to just do, do like a complete 360 and see everything. So when you're thinking about monitoring containers, orchestration, specifically with Kubernetes, you are monitoring past the infrastructure. So when you think of traditional monitoring, you're thinking hard drive, RAM, CPU, servers themselves, perhaps operating systems, applications running in those operating systems, maybe. But a lot of the time, you're really monitoring based on the system level. Now, when it comes to containerization monitoring, it's very, very different. Let me give you an example. Let's say you're running a container with that Nginx application that we took a look at last week, I believe. Now, the thing is, is that that container could be up and running, could be perfectly fine, could be stable, CPU's good, RAM's good, everything's good. However, the application inside of that container could actually be down. So if you're not monitoring that specific binary inside of that container, if you're not monitoring that specific runtime that's kind of kicking off that application, you don't actually know if the container is working or not. Again, it could be up and running and, and happy from an outside. From an inside, you'll never know unless you actually get in there and monitor. Now, when it comes to Kubernetes, uh, when it comes to containerization, what is there to monitor? Well, you have clusters, that's number one. Then you have the status of the container. Is it up, is it down, is it crashed? Is, you know, is the image that you're using for Docker not able to be found? So for example, let's say you're using Kubernetes and ACR and you have an image in ACR, but maybe your Kubernetes cluster hasn't authenticated to ACR. What's going to happen? Well, that image, it's going to crash. You're going to get a crash back loop error or an image pull error or something like that, specifically stating like, hey, we don't have authentication to this container. So you got to monitor that. You got to monitor the pod itself, the uptime so much more. There's so much that goes into monitoring from an application and a containerization perspective when you're running an orchestration. So monitor the application. That's really, really what it comes down to. You gotta get in there and you gotta monitor the application itself. Now, the really cool thing about containerization uh, and orchestration specifically with AKS is the fact that you don't have to worry about spinning up other types of monitoring solutions. So for example, in the container world, there's a really big monitoring solution called Prometheus. And if you haven't heard of it, definitely check it out. You can actually install it and run it in a Docker container, believe it or not, for free. And you can get in there and you can play around and you can connect your containers to it and you can see what different types of things you can monitor. Another really big one that's not free, quite expensive, is Datadog. Datadog is very, very big in the containerization monitoring space. It's actually what I've used in previous roles, and it's quite good. It's, it's really not bad. Um, but again, you know, it is that paid solution, so you do get a little bit more, and you do get that support. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the AKS portal here and just bring up some notes really quick. Okay. so. I'm at this AKS cluster and uh, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and 
zoom in a little bit more. Okay, that should be much better. So we're here, right? We're in this Kubernetes cluster that we have created. It's up, it's running, it's operational. Now you can see that, for example, if you go down to, we go to monitoring insights. So once you go to insights, this is kind of where you can see a little bit of everything from a monitoring perspective in your Kubernetes cluster. Now remember, this is all built in, it's running on application insights. So you, you don't really have to worry about anything here. Like it's pretty much out of the box at this point where you're gonna get all these different types of monitors and stuff like that. And you can set up alerts and all that. We're gonna definitely take a look at that as well. But you can do a lot in here. And again, this means that you don't have to go out and buy or install or configure a new monitoring solution. Um, I personally, like whenever I'm using AKS, I always stay inside of the monitoring inside of AKS because honestly, there's there's really no reason why you have to go out of it at this point. So the first thing, of course, is the cluster itself. So we can see here that we have an average of 7.71 from a CPU utilization perspective and a maximum of 9%. So either I'm not doing a whole lot of work here or I just got a big server running. So we can see this, right? We see the average, we could see the minimum, for example, 50th, 90th, 95 percentile, see a whole bunch of different stats here. And again, just from a worker node perspective, you could scroll down here, you could see some memory utilization, same thing. You could see that, you know, I, I'm using an average of 11, 11 gigs, give or take, um, maximum of 12.02. And then again, we see the same thing like the minimum and stuff here, for example. And again, this is RAM. Uh, it's running on worker nodes. It is running an operating system. So you are expecting for this to be a little bit higher. Um, and then you can take a look at the node count. So I only have one node that I'm running in here right now, that worker node. So we can see here, okay, one node is ready to go. And then we can also see if nodes are not ready. So for example, let's say you have three nodes or four nodes and one of those nodes, and remember a node is just a virtual machine running. Let's say you have one of those nodes and it goes down for whatever reason. Well, you can get that status here as well. And if you scroll down here, you can see any type of active pod count. So for example, I have 14 pods running right now. This is, you know, just unknown, succeeded, pending. Um, this is just from a purely from a running perspective. We can see everything running here. And then you can also, you know, drop down here and just go to pending or go to unknown, succeeded, et cetera. Um, you know, you can, again, get very, very granular here. And then that's it for the cluster portion. Now, remember, we got one, two, three, four more to go. <laughs> And that's just from the cluster. That's just monitoring from the cluster. So obviously, as you can see, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do in here. So now let's go to nodes. And we did already see a few things with the nodes. So, you know, we really don't have to go into here too, too specific, but we can see, you know, the cluster name, what version of the Kubernetes API we're running, uh, the proxy version, the operating system. So again, virtual machine, it's running on Ubuntu right now. Uh, the environment that it's running on. Uh, you can see any type of local disk capacity. Like for example, this is the disk that's running on the worker node itself. So you can get down to that infrastructure layer if you want to, and you can see exactly what's going on. And then if we use this drop down here, we can also see once this loads up, we can see a few different things that are running in here as well. So for example, the pods and the containers and stuff like that, we can get those statuses, but there is a specific place for that. And then we're gonna go to controllers here and we can see the controllers that are running. And then finally, we can go to containers. Now, this is obviously where the importance is from an application perspective. So we scroll down here, for instance, this is the Nginx deployment that we did. We can see all of the information about this Nginx deployment. We can go to the pod. We can go back here really quick. And then if we go to the node, for example, we can see any information on the node. Go back to containers again, go back down. So as you can see, you know, there's a bunch of different information that we can see in here from a container perspective. We can see that the status is okay. If there was a container that was down for whatever reason, you would see it here. The biggest thing that I do want to point out too is, you know, there are containers or pods that run specifically for Kubernetes to work. So for example, core DNS, core DNS is what Kubernetes uses to manage all of its DNS. 
So you can even see the, the containers and the pods that you didn't spin up, the ones that are you know on the Kubernetes cluster by default right in here as well. And then there's one more here. So really what you can do from a deployment perspective is you can see what deployments have ran. So remember, pods and deployments, those different types that you have or those kinds that you see in the Kubernetes manifest, we have a deployment kind here and we can see that, okay, here's our deployments. We can look at the Nginx deployment and we can see that it's in the default namespace. We can see that we have six replicas. We can see that six are up to date and then we can see that six are available. And of course we can also see the age there. So again, even from just like a pure deployment perspective, not even looking at the containers, just looking at the health of the deployments, you can see that in here as well. And then the one other thing that I wanted to show just in this space is the time range. So you can get really granular here and you can get really custom. So you can go all the way down to the last 30 minutes, hour, 24 hours, 30 days, or you can make it custom as well and go to specific dates. Now, I could be wrong here, but I am, I want to say Azure keeps the information for either 30 days or 60 days, uh, something like that. I know that they don't keep it forever. So I know that like you can't go, you know, back three years, something like that, but definitely research. I just, I, I forget the number off the top of my head, but it does go back a certain amount. So with that, what we can do is we can go like last 30 minutes, for example, we're not going to really see too much change here. But again, if you wanted to, you can get very granular and you can see last 30 minutes or you can see last 30 days. This cluster hasn't even been up for 30 days, but if you wanted to go all the way back there, you could as well. So the next thing that we're gonna take a look at is monitoring. Sorry, one second, here we go, all right. So the next thing that we'll take a look at is alerts. So again, this is obviously, very important. Uh, if something happens that you're not expecting, you obviously want to get an alert on it. That's, of course, important. So you can go ahead and you can set up a new alert. And then within this new alert, what you can do is you can select the scope. So for example, let's say you had multiple AKS clusters that you wanted to monitor in here. You absolutely could. I'm sorry, not monitor, uh, get an alert on. You absolutely could. And then the biggest thing is you can do the selection for the condition. So let's see, maybe we'll do uh, worker. Can you have the worker? Okay. So we can say maybe, oh, node count, perfect. Okay. And then we can see that we have one node count here and we can choose done for this condition. This loads up. Let's try that again. Okay. I don't know why it's not coming up on the condition here. Uh, all right, let's try something else maybe. Let's go to pod count perhaps. Maybe. Okay, weird. I don't know why that's not coming up in the condition. Maybe try the action group. No. Huh, strange. Let me, you know what? Let me just uh, retry to get into my AKS cluster again. Go to Kubernetes service, go to my cluster here. We'll go back to alerts, new alert, select a condition again, pod count, done. Let's try create or update managed cluster perhaps. Okay, not 100% sure why those other ones weren't working, but we got this one to work. So, okay, here's the deal. Whenever a cluster is created or updated, that's when you would get some type of alert. So then you can scroll down and if you have an action group, you can add that in as well. And then you can also set up a name. So you can say, you know, uh cluster is created or updated and then you know obviously give it a description here as well and then you can create that alert rule 
And okay, internal server error. Oh, uh, it looks like maybe something internally is going on from an Azure perspective, but it looks like we perhaps were able to create that rule. Manage alert rules, maybe. No alerts to display. Okay. So here, where's that notification? Mm. Weird. Okay. I did we did see a notification that like there was something going on with the batch API. So there could we could just have some really bad luck right now and could be an error or an issue going on uh, from a back end Azure perspective, uh, which is okay. But hopefully you get the drift. What you can do is you can set up alerts based on certain conditions. So for example, a pod count. If a pod goes over you know, if there's more than 20 pods on a cluster, maybe you want to get a notification about that. Maybe that's because, you know, it's a smaller worker node that all those pods are running on and you want to know, okay, if it goes up until this point, we want to be able to move it over to a different one. And then you can get an email alert on that if you want to. So the next thing that we can take a look at is the advisor recommendations. Michael. Hi. Hey, Hugo just said in the comments that maybe you need to fill in the remaining par parameters in the condition. Mm, let me see here. Well, I'll jump in and let you know that that was there. <laughs> let's try it again. So let's try, I think this was one that wasn't working. No, this one isn't working. Uh, which one? <laughs> the beauty of live. Right. <laughs> So yeah, we definitely don't need an action group specifically, but uh, yeah, I think I already filled all this in, but let's just try it again. Uh, greater update, save alert rule to resource group, enable alert upon creation, yes. Uh, okay, so it says my alert was created. If I refresh. Uh, yeah, odd. For some reason it says that it's created, but oh, there it is, okay. Second time's a charm, I guess. Mm -hmm. cool. So, yep, there we go. We have that alert created. Perfect. Right. So, um, yeah, and then we're still getting that error, though, here. Encountered internal server error for a batch API request. So, again, perhaps there's just something going on on the back end from an Azure perspective. Um, if we go to, like, manage alerts again, okay, yeah, we can still see our alert. Perfect. Okay. So, another thing that I wanted to show was the advisor recommendations. So, what I would say with this is, um, you know, you could take this with a grain of salt, depending on what the type of alert that comes in as. So for example, we have an impact of medium and it says that we're running an unsupported Kubernetes version. So ensure Kubernetes clusters run with a supported version. What this essentially means is, okay, you can choose between multiple different versions of Kubernetes. However, some of them may or may not be supported directly by Microsoft. So for example, let's say you're using like a preview version, um, which you know you could, it's not a beta from a Kubernetes API perspective, but maybe you could consider it like a beta in the Azure space. Um, so maybe that's something that they, they don't support or maybe an older version, like super, super old, maybe two major versions or two minor versions behind they're not gonna support it anymore. So if I go back here, we can see that there's, you know, obviously just one recommendation. Um, and then you can take this, you can actually even download a CSV or you can download a PDF of this. And if I open this up, you can have this nice little report here created for you and you can send it out to whoever you need. Um, perfect example here is like if you have a security team and there's some security recommendations uh, and you either need some buy-in or you need to send it to another team for them to be able to handle it. This is obviously a really great way to go about that. And then finally, what I wanted to show was the logs. So everybody's favorite thing uh, is of course to look at the logs, but uh, yeah, so no, this, is, this isn't that bad actually. Um, and I really do like the logs because it's not something that you have to manually input here. Like you don't have to manually input a specific, you know, SQL query or something, for example. So let's say I go to run, uh, oh no, sorry. Uh, let's go to queries here. And then you can actually pick a query based on the different resource types. So we have obviously a bunch of different queries here. But if I scroll all the way up, like we could do, for example, uh, container lifecycle information. So you could do a run on this. And as you can see, it actually, prints out this query for you. So again, like you don't have to remember it. You don't have to uh, put in anything manual here. 
unless you want to run, you know, a specific query that you have to run that isn't part of the Kubernetes resource uh, from those automated queries for you. But as you can see, you know, I could see some different query information here based on the result. Obviously, we only have one worker node, so we'll be able to see all of the containers, all of the different creation times, et cetera, inside of this worker node for specific pods and specific images. And then if we go to chart here, um, can't create a chart specifically, that's okay. We can go to, oh, actually I wanted to go to copy link. So you can actually copy results here. And then for example, like let's say you needed to send these to somebody specifically, you go here and pick your instance and hopefully this will, yep, there we go. Okay, so it's gonna bring me to my log specifically. So if somebody needs to look at them again, you know, another scenario is if there's something specific from a security perspective, you can go ahead and you can send that out to, to your security team. And with that, that is monitoring, logging and alerting in Kubernetes, specifically in AKS. Uh, so if anybody has any questions, we could open up the floor. Thank you, Michael. Sure. Much appreciated. Mm -hmm. um, does anyone have any questions that they would like to ask Michael? Let us know in the comments and we can pass them over. Just having a little nosy. doesn't look like there's any in okay today I just we'll just give it another little give it another little moment um do you want to share the qr slide for me please oh yeah absolutely thank you i cannot believe how dark it has got um <laughs> was, uh, 25 minutes that's crazy okay I uh, just want to say to, thanks to everyone who joined us live today. Um, much appreciated. If you could scan the QR code or go to the link um, that you see on the screen. I've also popped it in the comments um, and register to let us know that you were with us in this session. And also you'll get um, access to Microsoft material, learning material, all relevant to this topic, which is what, what you want to get your hands on. Um, so please do that. That would be much appreciated. And we'll just see if there's any comments. I don't think so. So I just want to say that we are now on the countdown to the Cloud Lunch and Learn first ever Ideathon. Can't wait. It's going to be great this weekend. Um, we've got teams all signed up. So thanks so much for um, signing up and joining us. Uh, if you want to check out those teams, go to the Cloud Lunch Learn website and forward slash ideathon, and then um, check out our teams. We've got some team names scrolling along the bottom there. There's a there's a a, a, a good comic theme there going on. Um, we've got Team Iron Man, Team Captain America, Team Thor, Team Hulk, Team Mark. And Team Falcon. So um, if you want to check out who's involved in those teams, then go to the website. And can't wait to meet you all on Saturday. Um, really looking forward to it. So with that said, um, Michael, we'll let you go. Um, oh, Hugo has, we've got a question. <laughs> okay. Right. Uh, let me see. Do you, you have a template? for alerts that you usually configure? Do you have usually any template of alerts recommended to configure to bond to your cluster or nodes? I would say not really. It's really gonna depend on what exactly you're trying to monitor. Um, I, I would say that you wanna like definitely get the basic alerts. Like for example, if a worker node goes down or something like that, uh, you're definitely gonna wanna know about it, but it's gonna honestly be a case by case basis depending on who and what wants to actually be uh, alerted and what you wanna be alerted for. 
you know, I, I could definitely say that, like, I've worked in companies where you want to be alerted for every single thing that happens. And then there's, you know, some companies where it's like, yeah, we can be alerted for every single thing that happens between nine and five. And then after five, you know, it's just crucial stuff, like if a worker note or something goes down, for example. So uh, I don't really have any templates specifically, um, but I guess my recommendations would be it's just like the the zero day things that you know you absolutely need to uh, to get an alert on at any time, like if a worker note goes down um, or obviously an application in a pod goes down, stuff like that. Yeah, so just take each layer at a time and then go from there. Yeah, yep, yep. And I think that's important as well. You need to think about not just setting up the alert, but then who does that go to? Which team does that go to? Who's responsible for it? And working out the process. Yep, 100%. Awesome. Okay, cool. Well, Michael, I will let you go. Enjoy the rest of your Monday. And thanks again for teaching us all about Kubernetes. Absolutely. Take care. See you again next week. See you later. Bye-bye.